All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Lost Fleet Dauntless by Jack Campbell. The series is called The Lost Fleet this is book number one in the series, and it is titled Dauntless, uh, Jack Campbell. Um, let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. Um, this is a really cool cover illustration by a um, illustrator, Pat Turner. I think it's just dope. It's really good. That's kind of why I bought the book. And I don't have any of the other books. I mean, there's got to be 20 books in this series. I don't have any of the others, and uh, the question is, shall I, shall I buy the rest of this series? Now, based off of this review, you will find out whether I liked it or not, and whether I should get them or not. But it's just a sharp-looking book, this book number one. Um, so, what is this about? Okay, so the Alliance has been fighting the Syndics for a hundred years and losing badly. Now, who are the Syndics? Well, the Syndic is short for the syndicate so it's not like the alliance this is, takes place in outer space star wars kind of like outer space adventure um battlestar galactica like outer space adventure space opera at its finest military space opera actually um so uh the syndics they're not aliens the syndics is short for the syndicate so the syndicate is just kind of like the bad guys, like the the government, the syndicate government of baddies that the Alliance is trying to overcome because, you know, to make the universe a better place. In a nutshell. So anyway, they're losing badly, though. The Alliance is getting their ass handed to them by the syndic fighting force. And the only hope for uh, is for uh, an old an old hero, an old commander who was a hero to emerge from a century-long hibernation and come to the rescue. It just so happens that that happens. Um, he's the uh, Jack Geary, J Black Jack Geary, is the uh, old dead, uh, the dead hero that comes back to life. You know, uh, he's presumed dead, but after a uh, hundred years, this famous uh, after hundred years after Black Jack Geary's famous last stand, where he he, he uh, saves a bunch of you know starships and but dies his own death sadly well he's brought but he actually was uh just in hibernation uh and you can figure out how all that happened as you read the book it's pretty cool um but he comes back to life and uh 100 years later and they he's now he's commander of this fighting force for the alliance again um the thing is is it's kind of like the born supremacy and the born ultimatum and the those kind of like where jack uh where born um has the amnesia and he, he has to figure things out because he has the amnesia he has to figure out what's going on jack geary doesn't have amnesia but he is kind of born again a hundred years later and he's kind of got to figure out where do we stand in the war why has the war been lasting so long why are we still fighting these people how bad has things gotten how how is commanding a starship different now than it was then who are who are these people that are under my command why are they so inept why is everything i mean he's he's really kind of comes back into this situation and these people hero worship him he's kind of like they're kind of like in awe of him because they've just heard nothing but these spectacular legends of all of his um, warfare exploits and they're just in awe of him and he's like oh my gosh I mean you know everybody knows his name he's he was like the Michael Jordan of the fighting force way back and he's come back to life to save them and they're just like oh my gosh and he he hates the hero worship he's like why are you worshiping me so much just stop it he just knock it off he hates that he's disgusted by their hero worship their ineptitude in fighting I mean, they've got all these starships, and it th seems like nobody knows what they're doing. Um, and so I'm reading this book along, and, and I'm just kind of like, okay, it's interesting, it's interesting. But then where it really sort of started to sell me was when he meets his grandnephew. Now, his grandnephew is one of the co starship commanders that's underneath him. And his grandnephew commands the, the starship named Repulse. And then his grandnephew hates him. Because his grandnephew was like, I 
uh, you've been dead a hundred years, but I and all of everybody that was part of your family, you became such a hero upon your death that everyone in the family sort of never could live up to that. Like everybody with the last same last name as you, just the expectation was so high it was suffocating. And I grew to hate you. And now that you're in front of me, I hate you. And Black Jack Gary, he's kind of like... He's still a young dude because he was born again. He was brought out of hibernation, still in his prime. He's still like a young guy. Meanwhile, his grandnephew is sort of this battle-scarred old starship captain who just has a poor opinion. Just to kind of... And, and uh, that is when this book started. Those, those few delicate conversations that those two characters had was really started what kind of was selling me the book it's it really um started to um uh, you know when when he was describing what's happened the last hundred years to the family that's really when um the best scenes were taking place in my opinion um i won't tell you what happens after the, that um but it's just it's uh we talk we get a lot of like world building in this world building it's um i i keep thinking of those scenes though where that's where the book really gains its humanity because up until that point it's kind of just like this straightforward war star star you know battle scenes wars kind of stuff and you don't really know if you really like black jack Geary because he's sort of really judgmental towards everything he's seeing he's like a hundred years like if i was to be a hundred years from now if somebody were to take me and put me a hundred years from now i don't we don't know what the world would look like but i might be like man back in my day we didn't do any of this dumb shit right i mean you might think that and you so you're not really liking black jack Geary too much until he Till he, inter he really gains his humanity when he interacts with his um, grandnephew. Those few brief scenes. Anyway, I like kind of like this book. Sort of the world building is, um, of course, they have to fight the syndics. But, but we get a lot of um, hard science fiction with um, how the messages that they send from ship to ship. You know, there's a delay. It's not like your cell phone here on Earth where you can just send a text message to someone in Germany and they get it like that. I mean, there's long distances here, and so these messages take a while. So sometimes there's a delay of six or seven minutes between him talking, and then, then you got to wait for the message to come back. And then there's different types of light speed, too, that uh, uh, the author, Jack Campbell, has um, introduced. You, We've got the hyperspace, but then we've also got the hypernet gates, which are sort of like these portals. And one is faster than the other. Um, sometimes if you travel... Uh, but there's a cost to going with a faster one and this, that, and the other. So anyway, um, just all that, plus just great. I actually was about a third of the way through this kind of ho-humming my way through it, thinking, I don't know if I'm really going to carry on with this. But then it started to grow on me, started to grow on me even more. And then I was like really invested, and I really loved it. So I think the consensus will be that I shall probably buy the rest of these books because dauntless book one in the lost fleet was pretty dope so i'm going to give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. these books are small they're thin they're only about 300 age pages each so you know i think that's dope